Okay, welcome to the Yupik Eskimo for the Natives of Alaska class. And if you haven't gotten it, the, um, the translation of most of the Alaska Native words for themselves usually always means the first people or the real people, and the Yupik are no different. They're the most diverse group of Alaska Natives, and they're the speaker of the Yupik language. And at the time of contact, they were the most numerous of the Alaska groups, and right now um, they've done the best job at trying to maintain their language. So here you can see a map of the Yupik culture area. So the primary area is the Yukon Kuskokwim, but again, their region aboriginally was, was pretty far-reaching and understand that um, even though we're talking about boundaries as to where people lived prior to contact, you know, these things were not written in stone, although everyone knew whose territory belonged to everyone else. And this is where we start getting into the whole Eskimo stereotype. And so in addition to looking at these PowerPoints, you're going to be reading um, Eskimo essays by Anne Fianip Riordan. And so the part, the very first part has to do in the introduction with the stereotypes that were put on Alaska Natives, especially um, the Yupik Eskimos, because they have the word Eskimo. But their region did not really fit the way the Eskimos were being treated in the media. So we're going to talk about this. Um, so if you think of especially the Yukon Kuskokwim area, do they have snow all year round? Do they have polar bears? Um, do they just eat raw meat for dinner? Um, and so understand that there, there have been all kinds of stereotypes and for anybody who lives up here and has gone to the lower 48, you know, you hear about dog sleds and Eskimos and all that stuff. So understand, um, we are going to be talking about the stereotypes that have been put on them. So the first time that the word Eskimo was ever put in writing was in 1584 um, in an English document. But the exact translation was eater, a snowshoe netter, but a lot of people think it means eaters of raw flesh. And so if you're not aware, a lot of the people in Alaska today who are Eskimo don't appreciate being called that. And that's where it gets complicated because they would prefer you to say, um, are you Yupik? Are you Inupiat? But as a lot of the elders would say, when they go outside, if they're in California and somebody asks them, oh, you know, where do you come from or what's your ethnicity? If they say Yupik, no one's going to know. But at least if they say Eskimo, um, that is a reference point for a lot of people. But understand that especially the younger people do not like that name. So the actual translation of the word Yupik comes from yuk, which means person, and pick, means, which means genuine, genuine or real. So again, if you are Yupik, you are considered a real person, a genuine person. And they were ethnocentric just like everyone else, so they believed if you were of another Alaska Native group, you weren't good enough. Only the Yupik people were the best. So how many languages are there um, in the Yupik language family? And this is where it gets a little confusing. Um, there are several in this group. And just for your information, when they first started doing subsistence studies up here in Alaska, they really the, the Yupik people did not have a word for subsistence. So instead, they substituted the phrase, always getting ready, which meant that, you know, if they want to eat, they always have to be doing subsistence. But the main languages, and again, this is where you might want to look at your Alaska Native language map, and this is where a lot of you went wrong with the Aleutian area, is that if you look at that language map, 
you'll see the Aleutians is all in green. But when we start getting into the Eskimo families, you're seeing different shades of blue. So the main one in this area is what's called Central Yupik, and that's the one that was done in the Yukon Kuskokwim area. Then you had the Aleutic language, which was put on the Eskimo people on Kodiak and Prince William Sound. Again, those people um, were not Aleut, and they had a totally different language. They're not Yupik either, but they come under the Yupik um, subcategory of languages. So I know it's complicated, but just remember that the Yupik people are Eskimos. Then you also have Siberian Yupik, which is only spoken on St. Lawrence Island. And you also might hear of the word Chupik. And Chupik is kind of a dialect, depending on who you talk to, that the people in Chivak, Alaska speak. You know, if you talk to them, they're going to tell you they have a separate language. If you talk to the Alaska Native Language Center, they're going to tell you another story and say that, well, no, it's just a dialect. So the environment that we're going to talk about primarily is the Yukon Kuskokwim area. And of course, Bethel is the hub of that area. And even though the St. Lawrence Island people, and you might want to look at your map to see where St. Lawrence Island is, um, even though their language is within the Yupik language family, they are actually more culturally similar to the people who are Inupiat further up north. And we saw that also with the Aleutic, where they were similar to the Aleuts, meaning they dressed similarly, they, they had the same kind of subsistence, but, and that's why the Russians confused them for Aleuts. But again, um, the St. Lawrence Islanders, their language is in the Yupik language family, but culturally they are more like the Inupiat. And so basically, the Yupik people were ignored um, probably until about the 18th century, and that's something we're going to talk about.